Welcome to welcome to the Learning Library Lunchtime Talk. Uh, today's topic is simplifying uh, robotics for factories, and we are co-hosting this talk with IAL or the Institute for Adult Learning. This is Afida from the L Library at Paya Lebar. So um, let me introduce our speaker. Uh, he is Leong Yongshin. Yongshin is the founder of Augmentus which is a robotics startup that simplifies and quickens the robot programming processes. Previously, he served as an engineer and technical lead for ASTAR. He's a graduate of NTU and he holds several patents and has published in several scientific journals. Before I pass the session over to Yongshin, uh, I'd just like to remind everyone, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat. Yongshin will see if he can answer from time to time. But we also have a Q&A at, at the end where we will also open uh, at the session for questions. All right, so Yongshin, if you're ready, uh, you can stop my slides anytime and start the talk. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. So. You can just call me Shin, uh, some of uh, one of the founders of Romantis. So, uh, Wing, would you allow me to share? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. <clears throat> so, I recently uh, just recovered from COVID. So, my voice may be a little bit coarse. Uh, any point of time during my sharing, uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to like stop me and interrupt me. I'm going to be more than happy to like have an interactive discussion uh, with you. So introduction about robotics. <clears throat> robotics, to put it in the simplest term, is just uh, an arm. So structurally, uh, it's very similar to the robot human arm. It has a shoulder, it has an elbow, it has a wrist. So the purpose of robotic arm is just to replicate the human movement. For example, the replicate of a human doing painting, doing sanding, uh, doing spraying, doing welding, then all of this can be uh, can be done using the robotic arm. <clears throat> and there is a recent trend of uh, usage of robotic arm inside the manufacturing sector. Uh, the reason is because there is a severe shortage of labor workers in factories uh, all over the world. People generally do not like to work in an uh, environment that can be very warm, very uh, dusty, um, and has very uh, you know, exposure to hazardous uh, chemicals and fumes uh, and so on. So that's why when given a chance, people prefer to work in offices and not in the manufacturing uh, factories environment. Because of this trend, right? Then this drove a lot of uh, factories to adopt robotic arms to supplement the shortage of human labor. Uh, but when they when the factory uh, does so, right, they assume that okay, I just get an arm and then the robotic arm can just do whatever it wants. I do whatever I want it to be. Uh, very often this assumption is wrong. Because robot essentially is what we essentially is quite dumb. You practically have to teach the robot how to move exactly so that it can emulate the, the human to perform certain tasks. So because the robot is done, right, then you need to have experts, robotic experts, highly trained engineers who are very familiar with coding and robotics to control these robotic arms to do the task. Then secondly, uh, if you have some exposure to robotics, then you realize that uh, in the robotics ecosystem, the, uh, there is a heavy fragmentation. So different robotic brands have their own programming language, sort of like a coding language on their own. They makes it very hard to learn. So you can spend maybe three to six months uh, learning EBB code. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you are familiar with KUKA robots or farmer robots and so on. So given that there are like hundreds of different robotic brands on the market, uh, there is a severe uh, fragmentation. So because of these two factors, uh, factories implementing robotics often face a very long downtime uh, before the robot can be used for production. 
And this gave us the inspiration to create Aumentus. Uh, and we are the spin-off on A-Star. Uh, previously, I was a tech lead. I was leading scientists and engineers to develop industrial solutions for MNCs. And the motivation came uh, when I was on a business trip to Japan, uh, to an aerospace company. And I realized that uh, around 80% of the workers inside the factory are like in their 50, the youngest are 50s really, and the oldest are 60 plus. And a lot of them are sitting down, squatting or standing for the whole for the whole day to inspect the aerospace parts or the fabricated aerospace parts. And there was a huge momentum in the Japanese companies to automate the whole process. But when we talked to them, we realized that actually it wasn't as simple as they thought. There's still a lot of impetus uh, for the companies when they want to automate their processes. A lot of times, this company, when given a choice, they still want to have human uh, inside, uh, inside the company to do uh, auto production. But the fact is that there's not enough people, and that is why they need their force to actually adopt automation in the production process. So it gave us, gave me the inspiration to create Aumentus to create a simple a tool that makes it much easier for anybody to control robots without any uh, requirement to know coding or without any requirement to actually know about the complex uh, robotics system. So how we work is that we allow the user to perform uh, rapid 3D scanning. Uh, and then with the rapid 3D scanning, you get a sort of like a digital twin of the robot cell and the setup and the workpiece. And you apply what we call autopath. So we can help you to generate like a complex robot motion uh, without coding or uh, robotics knowledge. And then you can simulate the entire robot process and deploy it onto the robot, regardless of the robot brand uh, that you're using. So first is 3D scanning. And then after 3D scanning, import. Then after that, you can use AutoPath to generate a uh, different robot motion that is specific to the use case. And we help you to you it can give you the opportunity to take a glimpse of what are the some of the process parameters they are important for different use case. So some of the important process parameters, like for example, in robotics, they care about the over, overlapping percentage when you use the robot to do sandblasting, to do powder coating, or to do chemical uh, spraying. Then each overshoot is an important parameter as well for like uh, non for spraying kind of application. Spray distance and in collision is something that important uh, for the factory because they do not want the robot to collide with their whole piece and also nozzle speed control. So using Omadia solution, uh, you can actually set these settings and the motion will be generated auto autom automatically to cover the entirety of the surface. Then after that, uh, the step number two was to create the points to cover a surface. And then this step, step number three, is what we call motion planning, which is to connect the dots. So you can imagine like uh, <clears throat> when you try to use your human arm to try and build a car. So there will be three points of contact. First is uh, your arm will be in a default position. Then you reach out. And then when you reach out to contact the cup, that's the second point. And then the last point would be you bring the cup to your mouth. So that will be the third position. So similarly for robotics, the concept is the same. So for example, I want to use the robot to spray, then you will need to actually generate these discrete positions so that the robot will follow through to connect the sort of connect the dots. So using Aumentus, we can help you to do a very quick simulation to preview the entire robot movement. So you can help you to actually check for reachability, whether the robot can reach certain parts of the surface, whether there's singularity, whether there will be uh, what we call mathematical issues uh, that the robot, even though it's within the reach, but the robot cannot, uh, because of the complication of the joints, it cannot go over there. So singularity, I put in other words is, uh, for example, you use your arm, right? then you try to use your arm to uh, twist your arm. You realize that uh, when you move your arm in free space, right, there are certain positions your arm might have some difficulty to reach. 
uh, for example, if you try to use your fingertip and touch the, uh, the center of your back between the, uh, between your, be, the middle of the spine between the two uh, scapula, uh, then you realize that it's very hard to reach that spot. Sometimes it's itchy. It's very hard to reach, even though uh, it's within the working boundary of your arm. It's hard to reach because it reaches a condition what we call singular, singularity. Uh, that means that your brain cannot compute uh, the ways for your arm to reach over there. And also because of the constraints of the joints of your arm, they cannot reach over there. But from our solution, it will preempt you that this situation has occurred. And then you can actually get a preview <clears throat> on what kind of a bone movement uh, will usually result in singularity uh, during the simulation. And then after simulation is done, we will help you to generate the robot code specific to the robot brand. Then you can use it as a basis to study how different uh, robot codes are generated for different brands and how they are being structured and how it's being relayed back to the robot motion. Uh, and that takes into account the robot speed, the IOs, and also other functions as well. So this is a video of uh, how augmented is being used in some of the industries. So they just use a tablet and then they bring it up into the short form and then they perform 3D scanning and then they just select different surfaces and the robot trajectory by motion will be automatically generated. And then they can preview and then once it's done, they can trigger the robot to reenact whatever this that you see on the simulation. So other than sand blasting, augmented has been being used for thermal spray, uh, arc spray. So all of these robots are controlled by using augmented um, without any coding or um, without the user needing understanding about robotics. Uh, so this is a chemical coding. So you generate the motion for synchronization with uh, turn or turntable so that when the robot moves, it will maintain a constant surface uh, from the object. So this is for uh, coating, uh, so additive process for uh, turbocharging. Yeah, so effectively, Ometers allows the user to actually very quickly generate all these uh, complex movement across different applications. So we have been used for welding, polishing, uh, inspection, sending, spraying, and video blasting. And some of the feature set that we offer is like uh, constant velocity, uh, overlay calculation, standard distance, attack angle, uh, for you to actually preview visibility and collision, and then how you can synchronize with PLCs, uh, like uh, also other inspection systems, external systems, and so on and so forth. Uh, the reason why uh, I delve a little bit deeper into the feature set is because uh, Aumentus is available on the iOS App Store. So when you go to iOS, iOS App Store, then you search Aumentus, then you can actually find our app available for download. And if you go to the website and register an account, then you'll be able to actually get a trial version. Then you can use a trial version to practice on robot programming using our solution. So when you download and try, right, then you start to realize actually for robotics, yeah, some of these things that I show here, like uh, overlap, uh, standard distance, attack and, attack and go, it might sound a little bit foreign now, but once you get a hands-on on the trial version, then it, it will occur to you quite naturally because it's, it's sort of an emulation of uh, our own human arm uh, itself. Okay, then some of the case study abrasive engineering, uh, that when they use a solution, they cut down from a traditional uh, three to five days to 30 minutes, uh, similarly for another company. Uh, so I reached the end uh, of my sharing session uh, about uh, some of the introduction to robotics. Uh, so if you are you keen to get a little bit uh, hands-on, uh, about like robotic simulation, some of the typical robotic processes. Uh, feel free uh, to visit our website to register an account and then download our, our app from the iOS app store uh, for you to actually uh, try it. Uh, do not be afraid that uh, even though robotics might seem a little bit foreign, uh, a little bit outreach and complex 
for now. But actually, once you practice a little bit, then you realize that you know, most of the time is a, the processes are similar, the considerations are similar. It's, if, for example, uh, when you download the app, then you realize that actually uh, it's more about moving to create different positions and then the robot will connect the dots. So most of the time it's uh, mainly about that. Uh, so yeah, we'll open the floor for uh, questions uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to a fruitful discussion. Um, so anyone who has questions, you may unmute yourself and ask your questions directly or you may leave them in the chat. Oh, um, but Shin, since because we have quite a lot of time left, we have five, mm. five minutes, do you think it's possible to bring us through uh, a live demo perhaps? A live? Mm. A live demo. Uh, or just show us some features of the Augmentus so that uh, everyone has a better understanding. Uh, okay, I can try and pull out the... Okay, so we actually have one question. Hmm. Do you need any programming knowledge to use Augmentus? No, you do not need to have uh, any programming knowledge to use Augmentus. Uh, because we help you to generate the robot, a specific code uh, that is that you can actually directly apply to the robot brand that you're using. Uh, so the common question is, like, is there a universal uh, robot code uh, out there that can command different brands of robots. Uh, yes, there is something called ROS, uh, Robot Operating System. I think in the books that uh, IAL will be sharing uh, for mastery, uh, some of the books talks about ROS. Uh, though ROS is able to control different robotic systems, uh, but you still need to be very familiar with C++ or Python in order to use uh, ROS yeah, efficiently. So the objective for Augmentus is to make it such that you know, the users do not need to learn coding and focus more on implementation uh, to make the robot move to complete the task and less on the coding aspect. Okay, so do we have any other questions? Uh, Shin, uh, hmm. sorry, uh, can I know whether this program can also be applied to service industries, you know, apart from factories or any other sectors? Mm, I think right now, I would say 95% of the robotic plants are used in the manufacturing sector. There are the remaining five sectors Robots uh, are seen being used in the f and uh, starting mm -hmm. with uh, f and to serve coffee, to, you know, to make prata, mm -hmm. uh, make egg, egg omelets, and so on. Uh, but, uh, but those are very, what we call very niche uh, use cases for now. Uh, I think if you go to IMM, you can see a like, robot being used to make bubble tea. Uh, but I would say, those are very, very minority cases <laughs> right now. Uh, Service-wise, yes, uh, there are robots being used in the civil industry as well. Uh, mainly, they, they, are incre they are increased in the usage of robots for medical, for the re medical rehabil rehabilitation process. So robotic arms are being used to help people, for example, who have suffered from stroke. Uh, then because robot can always repeat the same movement very precisely. So there are robots being used to help people to like, uh, undergo physiotherapy, uh, help, the, just help the patient to stretch their arms uh, and so on. Uh, so I, I would consider maybe that as service, but if okay. we are talking about uh, whether we will see it being served in restaurants, or being like over the counter receptions and so on. I think maybe not now. Uh, the reason is because even though the prices of robots have dropped uh, over the years significantly, 
uh, right now you can get a the cheapest one that I can think of is uh elephant robotics. You can get one maybe at three to five k. Uh, but it's mainly for hobbies kind of uh, uh use cases. It's good for good for practice, but not very good for uh, repeated usage in a more vigorous setting. Maybe I was thinking about using it in my library to to help me shelf the books if I don't have. I, I, think, I think Singapore has a startup that does that. Oh, uh, okay. They use robot to like scan the library, mm -hmm. the shelves, and then stack. I don't know what about stacking. And <laughs> I, I know I don't know that there's such a robot right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought it's, it's being implemented. Good to know. It's good to know. <laughs> I, I thought it's being implemented in Singapore libraries. Uh, not that I've seen. <laughs> not that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, give me a moment. I pull out the software. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have one more question. So, is Augmentus only for robotic arms? And what would be the most affordable robot arm brand and price? Uh, right now we are only for robotic arms. Uh, the I would say the most affordable robotic arm for hobbies. For hobbies. Uh, it is elephant robotics. Uh, but it's mainly for internal own aspiration kind of research. Yeah. And can Augmentus interface with all available brand of robotic um of robotic arm industrial pick and place products? Uh, we are compatible with some of the major robotic arms uh, on the market right now. So namely, they are ABB. Uh, yeah, I can put it on. <laughs> are, you, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we are compatible with ABB, uh, Universal Robots, uh, Nachi, Jaka, Kuka, Mitsubishi, uh, TM as well. And right now we are expanding our uh, compatibility with uh, Kawasaki and uh, Kawasaki and Yaskawa. Okay. Can uh yeah, Is, yeah answer the question. Yep, you did. You did. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So. When you open up this uh, software, right, then you can actually can select different robotic arms uh, that you want to simulate. And then you also can import different kind of tools. Tools are sort of like, um, it's, like it's like the tool that your arm will hold. hold. For example, you want to cut a carrot, you will hold a gun. When you want to do painting, you will hold a spray gun and so on. Uh, so I'll skip over this. So when you open up, then you see uh, projects like this. So, I'll go to the first one. <coughs> yeah, so this is a case whereby you want to actually, uh, for example, spray or impair. So you can see it's mainly just made out of different dots that is string up together. So when you go here, then you tell about the move, then you move over here. Yeah. So, so when I press, uh, then it's just a series of points that uh, you can actually move across and the robot will follow the instruction and then to link them. So right now at this stage is uh, what we call instead the waypoint state, then to connect the, connect the dots. Right? Then what you can do is you can press the plan here and then you will start to do the motion planning. And then after the motion planning is done, you can press a simulator. So if I press like this, then you start to see that the robot right, uh, will try to connect the dots to cover the entirety of the panel. So you can drag the stroller. Yeah. Then, yeah. as the robot moves, right, then you can press this button here. So this pattern will give you a uh, indication of what is the current joint angles of the robot. So joint angles is like your human arm, right? Your 
imagine if you twist your elbow at a certain degree, then your arm will move in different way. So you can see when the woman moves, then the different joint angles, all these values will change. And if you want, you can actually can change the values of the values here. Then you can see that uh, when you change different values of the different joint, it change different parts of the robot. So you can actually can play around to see how these different sets of value come together to form a series of movements. So the movement here is uh, you also can have different functions like weight, speed, uh, loop. So all of these are available for you uh, to try and implement them. Okay. So essentially, this is how Omentus allows the user to actually program uh, the robot. And then you will generate the robot code. So you can see for this for this whole series of movements, right? Then this is the code that we generated. So this is specific to EBD. So if you, for example, on the sense station side, you use a different robotic arm, a uh, different robotic brand, then the code here will change. So you can see, uh, it will, this is the coding, the move L, and then at the joint angles, and then the velocity of the robot. Uh, and then what is the uh, different settings? I'm not sure whether you will dive so deep into the coding, um, but if you are curious, it's good to know. Yeah, not to worry. I think it's interesting because what you're showing is actually no code solution. So it's interesting to see like on the other end, if you have to do it the traditional way, all of the codes, coding knowledge that you need to have. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, so it's, this is a brief sharing uh, about uh, what we do. So yeah, so with just simple uh, simple functions, you can actually can generate uh, a relatively complex movement to cover uh, quite a complex part, which is the impair load. Yeah. Okay, so we actually have a question uh, on Augmentus. How much does it cost to use Augmentus? Notice that it is talked to our team on the website. Is it possible to have some sort of a rough idea? Uh, <clears throat> the, so the software is uh, $9,000 for the software. And then it allows you to actually control different uh, robotic arms or robotic brands in the market. $9,000 to uh, this is just a little bit more than a uh, monthly salary of a, very, of a senior robotic engineer. So the reason we price it that way because we want it to be accessible to both uh, SME and MNC. Uh, right now, this, the government is very supportive of uh, automation uh, because it creates more sustainability uh, for the companies uh, to be more self uh, So if you if companies apply for a grant, then the cost can go down even further. So the $9,000, is it one-time money or yearly? Uh, it's a yearly. But the trial, the trial is free. Yeah, so I would suggest, I think it's very interesting to try out for yourself and see whether it works and, and explore different ways of using it. So definitely after this session, I will send out a post-event email and I'll link it to the draw. Mm -hmm. So you all can try it out afterwards. So actually, Shin, I also want to tap on your expertise mm -hmm. for a bit. What do you think is, say, like the trend upcoming based on uh, in terms of robotics in the factory or even outside based on what, what you see so far? Mm -hmm. The trend, mm -hmm. I think around uh around five to ten years ago uh the trend was um collaborative robotics uh means that the robot arm is softer than the conventional industrial robotic arm uh so when the robot moves right when it contacts you you will stop for safety 
uh, because it detects the detects of the presence of uh, human. Uh, so that has been gaining a lot of popularity uh, over the past uh, five to ten years. Going forward, for what we see, right, uh, there is a trend towards uh, using AI to control the robotic system, like be it using AI to generate the code for the robotic arms uh, so that the human does less coding, which is what the direction that Omentus is going. Uh, then they also other trends whereby people are coming up with uh, more innovative way. Uh, for example, around two to three years ago, there's a company called Vendorbox. Uh, they won a slingshot event of Singapore. So they were using something like a pen and then you draw and the robot will move, will follow the movement of the pen. Uh, so that also is another uh, direction. They called it uh, teaching by demonstration. You teach a robot by demonstrating how you should move. So that is uh, the other track, the other trend that uh, we are seeing a little bit more. Uh, nowadays, uh, I, I think ultimately, right, we'll come to a point whereby robotic arms will have this, you become more autonomous. Uh, right now, it's not that autonomous yet. Uh, right now, you still need to do a lot of teaching, right, because the robots are not very smart. Uh, but what we see maybe in the for, uh, next 10 to 20 years, uh, the robot, for example, you just give it a part. They tell, oh, uh, example, then the robot will interpret the part by itself and then example on its own without giving it too detailed instructions. Uh, this is a trend we were seeing. And companies like Google uh, is really working on this. So I saw a video recently whereby they told, they told the robot to go and fetch me a potato chips from a drawer. And the, but the robot will be able to know where it's a potato chip usually is not. So you open up different drawers, trying to look for the potato chip. And then when you found the potato chip, then you try to take it and uh, and the engineer tried to shut the shut the drawer uh, on the robot. And the robot is able to respond by like keep reopening the drawer with the potato chips and then pass it back to the owner. Oh, so that means that there is the AI integration element. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so I think that is, I think it's still maybe around 20% of its uh, maturity. Uh, but I think in given in another 10 years, I, the, I think robots uh, will be able, cognitive enough to able to interpret and decide on their own to complete different manufacturing tasks. I see. So meaning now what I can do is I can go chat GPT, generate code, and then just Based so, on the augmented, is that one way uh, to go about it? So actually, it's not for robot, right? Well, for robot programming, it's a little bit more complex. ChatGPT can supplement a certain portion. Uh, the reason why ChatGPT cannot be directly used for robot programming right now, right now, is because like what you saw in the video last time, robot programming involves a three D space. Oh. You need to you know like where's the point in 3D space and what's the orientation and then how do you connect the dots? Uh, all this you it's very hard to write in chat GPT. Oh okay. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So okay. but we do foresee that in the future, uh maybe chat GPT seven or eight or nine. You just pass in, you just say tell the robot, hey, I want to do this. Uh can you help me to you know carve a statue of uh, statue or someone, then you will just take the photo and then cut by itself. That could be a that, that is something that right now is possible. Uh, it's just that you need to do a lot of fine tuning. I see. Coding. I see. Uh, but from what we see, this is this is where the future will be. The robot will move from its own. And then this is the direction where Omentus is heading towards as well. Okay. to really cut down on the human input and in the easiest and most intuitive way for the user to actually pull it the robot motion. Interesting. Okay, so we have two more questions actually. The first one is any consideration required for turntable of part to work with robot? Mm. 
So we can also simulate external axis uh, on our platform. Uh, I think during one of the video that I showed us now, uh, whereby uh, the part is on a, a turn is turning constantly, and then the robot will synchronize with the turntable and move in and out to maintain a constant uh, offset, and then also uh, for consistent coverage. So we can actually uh, integrate turntable. Then for the requirement, right, our consideration for turntable, uh, if the turntable or the positional is uh, encoded, uh, then you can simply, and you know how to actually, uh, if, if the positional is from the robot brand itself, then we can treat it as a seven axis or the eight axis. And then you can actually put control directly from our system. Uh, if the turntable is not encoded and not from the same robot brand, uh, then usually what happens is that uh, you might need a PLC and then perform something called the uh, motor PID calibration. So to set, for example, uh, to turn a 360 degree, I will need like 360 pounds. Each pulse will turn one degree. So you need to do a little bit of work, uh, but once it's set up, then you can actually can command the robot to turn, uh, command the turntable to turn, uh, however you wish, uh, from sort of command commands and uh, functions that we have available. So I, I'm sorry to delve a little bit deeper into the turntable, but I hope you understand, uh, uh, explain, uh, how answers your question. Then uh, for, for Phoebe, mm -hmm. uh, is there training provided? So we will provide a two hour training session and then we also have online uh, documentation and tutorials, videos uh, for the user to follow through. And we also have an uh, online portal that if you have any inquiry or questions, you can just post into that portal. So what happens is that you will receive periodic uh, reply emails uh, and then about the questions that you ask. Some because usually some of the questions that is being posted may not be able to answer immediately. For example, you the user might give a suggestions on a newer feature. So what will happen is that when the feature is being worked on and then in progress, then you will receive email regarding the status um, of the recommendations and features. Interesting. Okay, do we have any other questions? In the meantime, Shin, do you have anything you'd like to share further or add to? Uh, I, I do not have. So uh, if you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, yeah. Either through the website or through my email address. Uh, I'll be more than happy to actually get in touch. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's conclude this session. Okay, we do have one more. Can Augmentus work with sensor? Uh, augmenters do provide two types of sensors. Uh, the first one is the sensor is available on the tablet itself. Uh, then you can use the tablet to actually do 3D scan. Uh, the accuracy is 0 0.5 millimeter. Uh, then the other kind of sensor uh, that we are using is uh, industrial laser profilers for accuracy for applications that require high accuracy. So yes, uh, usually we take the input. Uh, uh, there, there are two kinds of inputs. Uh. Okay, maybe I can. Uh, give me a moment. Sorry. Yeah, so uh so for the sensor wise, yes, uh we do provide uh like a 3D scanner uh, that is compatible with the iPad, so you can do rapid 3D scan. Uh for situations that calls for higher accuracy, uh, 
application like the like routing or the debugging, uh, cutting and so on. Then we do offer other kind of 3D scanners uh, for higher, higher accuracy applications. Then we also offer engineering support. Uh, if you need somebody, if you need our engineers to, for example, let's help to set up and connect, uh, set up connectivity to the robot uh, and so on. So we do provide engineering support as well. Okay, any other questions? Okay, otherwise, if no more questions, then we can end this session. Before we go, uh, and before I hand it back to Afida, I'd like to just share a little bit about our upcoming sessions and also we would like to trouble you to help us with the post survey, our uh, post event survey. So thank you for attending today's session. I hope that uh, you learn a lot about augmenters and what you can do for you. I think the no code solution is actually really wonderful. And based on what Shin shared, I, I'm really looking forward to when you know it's more intelligent, when there is more of the AI uh, capabilities. So we would like to trouble you to help us fill up the survey. And not to worry, the slides for today's session and also the recording will be sent to you in a post uh, follow-up email after this session, okay? And again, if you'd like to connect with Shin, here is his contact details. And I also uh, uh, include the link to the trial so you can try it out for yourself. So Shin very helpfully shared with us more of the, the knowledge part and a brief walkthrough. But I think like what he mentioned, you will need to really try it out for yourself to see how it works and it sounds like there will be some trial and error involved in this process also. Okay, then our next InnoBite session will actually be more on uh, the IP law. So what are some of the copyright uh, considerations and commercialization challenges uh, we should take note of as uh, say, you know, other educators or even professionals in the TE sector. So what does, what implications do they have uh, for us? Especially since, you know, if you're teaching, then usually you would, uh, say take a uh, YouTube video, but are we infringing any copyright uh, right there and by doing that? So this is what the session will be uh, going through and we will have a speaker from IPOS International uh, who will be going through this with us, okay? So feel free to register for this session. <clears throat> and we also have an upcoming you know, vlog event. So. Currently, the bus is actually all on AI. We want to take a deeper look into it to see how can AI help us to solve some of the adult learning challenges. So it will be happening tomorrow, actually, 3 to 5 p.m. online via Zoom. So it's a session not to be missed. And then after that, uh, the final plug is really for our Inov uh, Plus event. So we are actually calling out for solution partners to submit your expression of interest uh, to the published challenge statements that we have currently. It's actually on the website, so you can uh, you know, find out more information on the website itself. And, and this is for run one. Uh, for run two, we actually also open just open it up and we are calling for challenge owners. So if you have a learning problem in our organization that you would like to find a solution for, then please find out more also on the website. Okay, so then there's a request to show Shin's contact details. So here it is. Not to worry if you miss it because I'll send uh, the, the slide deck along with <clears throat> all the materials needed afterwards. And Shin will be cc there as well. Okay. And so with that, I'll hand it back to Afida. Thanks, Win. Thanks, Win. Sorry. Before I uh, we close shop today, I just have four slides to show. Uh, and uh, the links to the slides uh, I've just pasted in the chat. I'll just share my screen. Okay. okay, the first one will be the books that we have in NLP Overdrive website. Uh, as mentioned by Shin, uh, Augmentus is for those who, doesn't, who don't have knowledge about coding, but the books we recommend actually on ROS. He mentioned what is ROS just now. So if you want to know more, these are the books that you can explore. OK. 
Okay, for the next slide, um, these two um, uh, videos are up on the Udemy business website. If you want to know about robots and industrial robotics, uh, you can explore these two videos. They are for free as well. So I um, just want to share what's up uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, we have a, an, a talk which has a different slant to AI. This is on uh, why communication and reasoning skills are important for children in order to prepare them for work in the AI age. So if you're interested, please do sign up at the QR code or the website that I've just pasted in the chat. And last, I think I'll need your feedback as well on, on the program or on what you want to see at, at a library uh, lunchtime talk. This is the QR code. I'll just leave it for a few seconds longer uh, for you to scan the code. So in the meantime, I'd like to share, I'd like to thank uh, Shin for his very innovative talk and for everyone who has joined, who have joined in the session today. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again uh, in our future talks. Thank you, Shin. Thanks everyone for coming. Hope yeah. you have a good rest of the week. Okay, thank you as well. Thank yeah. you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.